everyone. Uh, my name is Piotr Wawrzyniak and uh, today, with, to, together with Jarek, we will talk about uh, how to use Apache Flink in uh, smart cities on the example of the city of Warsaw. Um, this work is, um, so th this, this presentation would basically uh, involve these uh, six steps. Uh, we'll, I will talk a bit about the project that we, we came here to, to show the results. Then we'll de talk about two Flink components that was developed for, uh, for the city of Warsaw. So one for uh, vehicle movement analyzing and to predict uh, vehicle delay. Uh, next, we'll talk a bit about the uh, deployment and integration and operational management um, experience and lessons learned from, from that. And shortly sum up everything at the, at the end. So uh, we are here because of the VAVEL project. VAVEL stands for Variety, Vel Veracity, Value, Handling the Multiplicity of Urban Sensors. And this is the European funded uh, project and on Horizon 2020. Uh, the, the consortium is led by the National University of Athens. Uh, among the partners, we have the TU Dortmund, AGT Technology, and uh, Fraunhofer Institute from Germany. Uh, two cities, uh, Dublin, represented by Dublin City Council and City of Warsaw. Uh, Warsaw University of Technology and uh, Orange Polska are in the center from, from Warsaw and IBM uh, from Dublin, from Ireland. And the goal of the project uh, is to create the universal platform that could uh, enable the massive and extensive use of the uh, number of sensors that are already deployed on, or in the city. Uh, among these sensors, uh, we have uh, public transport vehicles, in the case of the city of Warsaw. Uh, in case of Dublin, uh, we mostly focus on the use of CCTV cameras deployed in, in Dublin, and uh, public transport vehicles as, oh, sorry, as well. Um, so yes, the, the goal is to, to provide the, the uh, managing and mining the, of the multi, multiple um, data streams. Uh, and um, we, are, we are almost, uh, we are about to finish this project this year. So that's why we, we have uh, some results to, to show and to discuss uh, here in, in this conference. Uh, we will not focus on the Dublin use case because well, we are both from Warsaw, working in Warsaw, so we will discuss about the city of Warsaw a bit. Uh, here we primarily focus on the public transport data. Um, the two streams that are core of our processing solutions solution involves the real-time locations of trams and buses, and uh, in Warsaw there is around a bit over 400 uh, trams operating in peak hours and uh, more than 1,800 uh, buses that operate in the um, city of Warsaw, in the agglomeration of Warsaw. Uh, moreover, we join static data to, to the streams. Uh, static data means the timetables, the map data, in some cases, to enrich the raw data streams and to, to later produce some useful knowledge. And what we will present is the, not our solely work. This is the joint work of uh, Orange Polska and Warsaw University of Technology teams uh, with, with uh, special effort from uh, Marcin Luckner, Karolina Kwasiborska and Tomasz Zaremba from Warsaw University of Technology. Um, so this is the um, general view of the Warsaw use case of the Vavel project. Uh, so we have uh, on the left side, you can see the uh, data sources that we use. So the vehicle locations, as I mentioned, to two data streams, uh, timetable data, not truly stream data, but the various text services of the city of Warsaw. So it includes the uh, Twitter data, or uh, what they call it, uh, 19115. This is the, uh, I would call it, a city level call center or, or a city level citizen contact point. So this is a single number and uh, in fact a single service that citizens can use to report any problems in the city or to contact the city if they have any problems to, to solve. Uh, and this is uh, quite a unique in Warsaw, at least in Poland. I don't know another city that uses such system. 
with such large scale. So we also use uh, reports from this system uh, to, to, to further processing. And uh, we are also using the location statistics from a mobile, a public land mobile network, so namely from Orange Network in Poland, in Warsaw area, to infer the uh, data flows, the, sorry, to infer the people flows in the city. Uh, so we can, um, for example, suggest that there is a need for more buses from certain area to another, or there is a need for new routes to be planned. Uh, on the basis of the uh, of this data, uh, so we have uh, within the framework we have uh, several several processing layers. Uh, this includes, of course, the data collection, but and, and data storage. But the core part is uh, stream processing in um, that we try to do in uh, almost real time. To, um, to provide the data to the exposition layer that is based on WebSockets and provides the uh, subscribers with the data feeds from, from what we uh, get from, from the streams. And uh, the use cases that we exploit in the city of Warsaw, it's a particular intelligent transport planner. So the route planning, so planning the route with the use of uh, public transport that uh, is not based only on the uh, timetables data, but includes the real-time delays, the predicted delays in case of uh, vehicle changes, uh, that includes the uh, emergency situations that happens in, in the city uh, to, to provide the more efficient uh, journey proposal. Uh, another uh, feature that we use is the intelligent emergency response. So when we, this is Somehow, when we infer from the streams that there is an emergency, uh, like uh, we, we observe that all public transport vehicles in certain area stopped and are not moving for, not moving for uh, 10, 15 or 20 minutes, it means it's not a normal traffic jam, but it's probably some serious accident happening in the area. We can then verify it with, uh, with appropriate uh, services like police or, or uh, municipal police and inform the citizens in the area, oh look, there is an accident here, avoid this area to, for, for your own safety. That's, uh, that's the case. Uh, it also includes the personalized services, so uh, if you are not in this area, we will not inform you, that's, that's obvious. But on contrary, we can also inform you that uh, we, we see that uh, you are traveling every day with the use of uh, line, um, let's say, 7. And we know that today line 7 will not operating. So even if you are not using our planner, we suggest you to choose another mode of transport because your favorite line is not operating today. Uh, and as I mentioned, we can also infer the data to propose the, uh, either the new schedule or the new routes for the city because we see that there's a huge difference what city thinks that people are traveling and what we really observe in the, in the mobile network. Okay. Uh, on this slide, we can uh, see the high-level system architecture. On the top, uh, there is a, a data sources layer. We are using different uh, web services exposed by City of Warsaw, so for example, um, information about uh, trams and buses location, the information about uh, alerts uh, and uh, schedule changes exposed by using uh, RSS by uh, ZTM, this is the name of the Warsaw uh, um, Public Transport Authority, which, uh, which is uh, responsible for the uh, public transport in, in the city. Uh, of course, uh, there is also uh, the information about not emergency issues reported by the citizens and uh, statistical data from the Orange uh, Mobile Network. Uh, the next layer is the data acquisition, consists of the, some data acquisition components. The, uh, major part of these layers is based on the Apache Flume sources, but we're also using dedicated application for the timetables 
timetables uh, time table ladder because uh, timetables are exposed by Warsaw uh, Public Transport uh, uh, Authority using SQL database. The next element, this is that data processing layer. We're using Apache Flink uh, and Apache Spark and uh, Apache Kafka as the data buffer or the stream buffer. And uh, below of this layer, we can observe the data uh, the storage layer. Uh, we are using, of course, HDFS uh, for, uh, as the major data storage. and. Uh, because SQL and uh, Redis uh, as the storage for the mobile application backend. And uh, in the button, there is a, a data exposition and application layer, uh, the mobile application and uh, open data streams um, that will be uh, exposed uh, by City of Warsaw as open data finally. Uh, from infrastructure point of view, uh, this slide presents a uh, test bed located in Orange. This is a relatively small Ap uh, Apache Hadoop cluster. We, have, we are using uh, 11 uh, data nodes, um, at, uh, overall over about uh, 120 uh, gigabit, gigabit uh, Yard memory uh, and uh, about uh, 30 uh, virtual cores. Of course, the, the pre production system installed in the city of Warsaw uh, is uh, much bigger. A uh, few words about uh, Flink application dedicated uh, module. Uh, for uh, vehicles movement analyzing. The input data for this uh, module is uh, uh, the stream of the buses and trams location, which uh, is collected uh, from Kafka using, using uh, specific topic names, and uh, static timetables. Uh, we are using GTFS files. Uh, this is abbreviation from General Transit Fits specification and de facto standard in uh, public transport uh, schedules exposition. And uh, what is the main role of uh, Apache uh, of Apache Flink application, the Flink Movement Analyzer? We, uh, based on the raw data, uh, we connect this information with. Uh, the dedicated timetables information. It's uh, very uh, um, the, the raw stream of data with the uh, location of the every vehicle so is uh, collected, and uh, we added information about previous stop, next stop, or delay, vehicles, uh, uh, velocity, and uh, money. Uh, different um, elements, and uh, I show you uh, this, this information later on the uh, next slide. This uh, slide presents the simple data flow. The information about uh, the vehicle position are collected using Apache Flume sources, then sent to Apache Kafka and uh, collected by uh, Flink movement. Uh, analyzer, and the final result is also stored uh, in Avache Kafka and uh, sent to HDFS uh, as classic uh, CSV files. Uh, on this slide, you can see uh, typical raw data exposed by the city. This is uh, information about Buses location. The first this is the line number. The second one is brigade number, timestamp, uh, vehicle position, longitude and longitude, and uh, final time step calculated uh, when this record is uh, stored uh, by Apache Flume and sent to Apache Kafka. Uh, after uh, processing by, by Apache Flink, we can observe. Uh, that uh, this raw information was 
uh, completed by the scheduled data. For example, we, we can see uh, the previous stop, the next stop, information about the uh, trip ID, and many, many, many information that are very useful uh, in the uh, next level of the processing of this data. For example, uh, the information of if the Vika is overlapped by the next brigade, uh, information about real delay of the, uh, of the uh, tram or bus. A uh, few words about data volume. We are process, uh, processing about 6 million uh, records daily. Uh, for example, uh, we're processing from 2 to uh, about 5 gigabyte, gigabytes of uh, data uh, of uh, buses. Uh, to uh, 2.5 uh, gigabytes uh, information about trams. Timetable information is relatively uh, small uh, volume. This is about uh, half of the gigabytes. Uh, and uh, much smaller is text data information about uh, the uh, traffic accident or uh, schedule changes. And uh, finally, information about statistical statistics from uh, mobile networks. Yeah, so um, we are short on time, so uh, very shortly about this. This is, sorry that this is in Polish. Uh, this is the motivation for the next use case. This is the delay prediction module. Uh, the idea shown here is that uh, we need to plan our journey that we use this red bus. This is line 414. We need to change to the bus uh, 5118H, which is now delayed by seven minutes. But when we are about to change, we can see that this uh, vehicle delay changes to 16 minutes, which on contrary could cause that another route would be faster than waiting for this much more delayed vehicle. And uh, that was the motivation to create the prediction module that uh, uses Flink ex extensively. So uh, we take the raw stream of data from uh, you know, the already preprocessed uh, stream of data that Jarek mentioned. Uh, we take this data as the, as the input for the module. We create the time windows, actually the bunch of time windows uh, with 5, 10, 15, uh, half an hour, up to one hour. Uh, to collect the information what about the delay of a single vehicle, uh, to create a testing record, uh, a learning record for the uh, machine learning module. So we are able to tell machine learning that if the vehicle of this line at this time is delayed by five minutes, after one hour it will be at this position and delayed by 10 minutes or whatever the value would be. Uh, so thus the, the machine learning module can learn how to predict the values. At the same time, we uh, just pass this value to the machine learning model, so we are able to immediately produce the prediction. So at the same time, the model evolves, but constantly provides the prediction for, uh, for the delay, which we then uh, process to, to GTFS real time and then inject into our root planner so it knows the delay and can use it for, for journey, plan, journey planning. And that's very shortly because <laughs> we, are, we are short in time now. Uh, so uh, we, on, the, on this left upper uh, figure, you can see the, how the accuracy of the model varies uh, in, in this prediction. So uh, average error is about 150 seconds, uh, and it's for... Uh, um, so it's about two minutes when we try to predict the delay after one hour. Uh, and here you can see also the, the summary for different time windows. Uh, okay, so we'll skip that one. Uh, regarding operational management, we have integrated Flink in uh, Apache Ambari, so we can monitor the cluster using a standard tool. Uh, what is important and what we, <laughs> what we uh, suggest you to take, take a look at, when you integrate Flink in Ambari, it, uh, Ambari itself creates a one empty job in Flink. So when you monitor, don't look that there is one job, uh, because you need at least two if you are running, running something, uh, something useful. Okay, so uh, sorry that the last part was short, but uh, that's, that's all. Okay, then...
Okay, also from my side, uh, thank you for your presentation. We are running a bit short on time. Maybe one question uh, from the audience. Hi, hi. Um, very interesting project. Um, just uh, the question is, at the beginning I had the impression that you said that it's a, it's a platform that is flexible and can be adapted to other cities. Yes. So how is it? Because a lot of things in this architecture is very like Warsaw specific. How, um, what would be transferable? Uh, well, the, the core components are, um, I would say they are generic and then adopted for Warsaw use case. And many of the components are um, at the same time used in Dublin and in Warsaw. Okay? Or we are, uh, let's say, examining these use cases. So the core of the platform uh, this is the transfer library part, so uh, the, just the adoption layer, which, well, it will have to be city-specific because the city, sorry, because the, each city uses a, like different data formats, uh, data sources, etc. Et but the... Uh, actually, you will, I, I feel, no, you will have to write a new acquisition layer or adopt the acquisition layer, and the entire processing, this is agnostic from actually the, the data streams. We, we transform it to the stream of vehicle locations, so as long as you are able to provide the equivalent data, we can then transform it into our internal format, and then everything works smoothly. That's, that's why this is transferable. <laughs> Okay, then uh, once again, thank you. We have to wrap it up now. If there are any more questions, I'm sure that Piotr and uh, Jaroslaw uh, will be around. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much.